Hi everyone, this is Jean Hansen, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. So right now we're in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and some businesses are starting to get back to work. Most others are still closed. So while you're closed and even if you're not fully back to work, now is the time to consider about how to reopen safely. And so this video is going to give you several recommendations on how to ensure your cleaning company does open safely for your employees, for yourself, and for your clients. So the first thing is you want to have a preparation team. You don't want to do this alone. You've got so many things going on, to, so many things to learn about what to do and what not to do. Um, so you want to include other people in this. So include management or supervisors, office personnel, and even at least one or two frontline employees because you want to get everyone's input on this and you want to get all of their feedback on the best way to approach things. You want to designate a leader to ensure the safe re-entry and compliance. So you don't necessarily want to be the leader because you've got a lot on your plate. So I would recommend a management person or a supervisor, someone that's going to be out in the field to, that can ensure that safe re-entry and compliance. You want to create or update your infection control policy with easy access for employees. Make sure that they are able to access it with ease. In, included in your infection control policy would be protocols for returning to work, which we're going to discuss, procedures regarding sick employees, and procedures to keep employees safe. You want to do a risk assessment. So what is the exposure risk for employees returning to work? So you need to put some preparation and thought into this. And then you want to create controls based on risk. So for example, do you need to make any changes to the workplace once they come back? Perhaps it would be staggering shifts. If you've got a lot of employees working in a building, for example, would it make more sense to stagger the shifts so that you don't have everybody coming in at six o'clock to clean and everybody's trying to get in this tiny little janitor's closet, right? You're probably going to have to um, have a rule of one person in the janitor closet at a time. You have to consider potentially limiting the use of shared equipment because you don't want people using a lot of the same equipment and thus increasing the chance of getting the virus. It's probably not necessary to do physical barriers. Um, however, you may need to do some workspace configuration in your own office if you have um, more than one or two people working in the office with multiple desks. You want to have an emergency communication plan. Providing updates to your employees quickly is really important. So how are you going to do that? Are you going to do it through email, text, Zoom, or some other way? Make sure also that you give clear directions and your expectations so it's easy for everyone to understand. And if you've got employees that speak multiple languages, make sure that everything is easily understood for everyone. You're going to need to update your training program. So PPE training is going to have to be more in depth. If you haven't been doing a lot of disinfecting, which most cleaning companies have not, they've been doing more cleaning than disinfecting, you're going to have to provide special training around that. Uh, you're going to want to cover social distancing training. People are used to social distancing at home, but what does that look like at work? And then consider what other risk factors and behaviors might need to change. So here are just a few tips for safe practices for returning to work. This isn't an all-inclusive list, but things that you should consider. So if you're having meetings, you're probably going to have to have them via phone or video conference. You'll want to put up posters with all the CDC protection recommendations. Um, and those I would definitely recommend at your office and in the janitor closets. You might want to talk to your clients about putting them up around the buildings. Um, you'll want to provide hand washing instructions and hand sanitizer. Now, you know, everybody's like, oh, I know how to wash my hands because it's all over the place. But be very specific because not everyone covers about how to clean in between the fingers and going up a little further on the hand into the wrist and how to get underneath the fingernails and things like that. You're going to require PPE. Your employees are probably used to gloves and goggles, but now they're going to probably need to wear masks or additional 
Uh, PPE if needed, if it's a full body suit or booties, um, if they're doing disinfecting services. Um, make sure that you're very detailed on how training them on how to properly put on and take off PPE because so many people are contaminating themselves and their PPE by not doing this properly. Require six feet of distance from coworkers, employees working in the building, and the public potentially using those buildings while you're cleaning. And then, of course, cleaning and disinfecting procedures for work areas and really important also is for equipment. Equipment is going to need to be disinfected after each use. Make sure you're encouraging communication if your employees have questions. Many of them may be fearful about coming back to work, so make them feel comfortable by encouraging them to ask questions and provide a way for them to share their concerns and to share their ideas. You can alleviate stress and anxiety if you foster that open communication within your company. And also, you could get valuable input for implementing strategies during this time. So be sure to welcome their ideas as well. So these are CDC recommendations for a safe reopen and bringing your employees back. So first of all, bring them back case by case. So you probably are going to bring back the people who haven't, haven't been ill first and haven't tested positive. So for employees who have been sick, you want to wait a full three days after a full recovery. And that means they've not had a fever for 72 hours without any kind of additional medication that would keep their fever down like ibuprofen. Their respiratory symptoms have to be improved and seven days must have passed since the symptoms began. Employees with, that are confirmed but have no symptoms, they must also wait seven days after a positive test result without becoming ill or showing symptoms. Limit contact after returning to work. So they must maintain a six foot distance for another three days and they must wear a mask. Employees confirmed with mild symptoms. They must wait three days after a full recovery with no fever for 72 hours without medication to keep that fever down. They cannot have any symptoms. They also need two COVID-19 tests 24 hours apart by a medical professional. And both of those tests must be negative. Employees who have been confirmed and hospitalized. They need more testing before they can return to work. They need full medical authorization to return to work. And they may be tested several times to confirm that they aren't shedding the virus. Now, you do have options here. You must, first of all, adhere to the CDC standards that I just covered. But you could make your policy even more stringent if you would feel more comfortable doing that. So you could make them wait longer after recovery. You may require all employees to be tested for COVID-19. I don't know that that's necessarily the needed in a cleaning company situation, but that is totally your call. You may conduct pre-screening, and that would mean taking their temperature and assessing symptoms. Again, that would be your call. At the very minimum, I do recommend conducting a pre-shift survey. So that would be a series of questions that you would ask to make sure um, and to verify asking questions like, are you showing any symptoms or have you been around anyone who has been diagnosed with COVID-19? So questions like that would be included in a pre-shift survey. So if an employee gets sick, the first thing, obviously you're gonna send them home immediately. You are going to clean and disinfect their work area immediately. And before they actually go home, make sure that you determine who they had contact with. Okay, so consider the day that they showed symptoms and two days prior. Anyone within six feet of contact with that employee in that time frame should be considered exposed. So you would want to contact those people. So those are some tips for you to be able to reopen your cleaning company safely. If you would like more information, training, and resources for your commercial or residential cleaning company, we invite you to visit the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. Have a great day and good luck with reopening your cleaning business.